to what's up you money makers what's up you sndl shareholders and what's up you hcmc army and hcmc shareholders welcome back to the channel in this particular video i'll be talking about two of our favorite stocks number one sndl ticker symbol sndl trading on nasdaq it is at 33 cents at the moment sundial growers inc and the second stock is hcmc which is an otc traded stock which is at 0.00 one and I have done specific research that I want to share with you around safe banking act we were hoping for this act to be passed or get the blessings from Senate last weekend it did not happen but this is once again a pretty good catalyst for both SNDL and HCMC because they both are both of these businesses are aligned with cannabis and I'll be talking about how Safe Banking Act can help with direct response to issue that has legal cannabis companies that can operate within the United States what was the status what happened and what we can expect in future because it did not pass into the Senate this does not really impact or it's not going to drag the price down for the stocks overall but on the good side this could be a pretty good catalyst whenever it is passed and it becomes the law it could help both SNDL and HCMC in addition to that I'll be talking about Nasdaq's minimum bid price rule requirement I have done additional research on Nasdaq's listing center as well and you want to understand if you own SNDL and if you're trying to get into SNDL as well and I'll be also talking about some of the workaround that are mentioned on the same listing center on the Nasdaq application or Nasdaq listing center and we'll be talking more about what HCMC is up to why I still believe in HCMC and what HCMC is doing because this is one of the largest quarter that they had if the law goes through the safe banking act goes through gets the blessings from senate this can really really impact the revenue for HCMC in the upcoming quarter so this could become a pretty big catalyst I want to share this information with you HCMC army HCMC shareholders and SNDL shareholders as well so watch the full video stick around and try to understand how it can positively impact there is nothing to lose for both of the stock since it did not pass it does not really change the current momentum into the cannabis market that we see at the moment in return all i ask you is just hit the like button subscribe to the channel turn on the notification bell and if today is your happy day or extra happy day by the way happy fourth uh, if today is your day just hit that join button and or hit the thanks button and help the channel out i'll be really really grateful to you now let's talk about what's going on with sundial growers but before that what is the safe banking act the safe banking act is a direct response to issue faced by legal cannabis companies operating in the United States. The act is designed to bridge a gap between those companies legal standing in some states and the current non-legal status of marijuana sales and usage on a federal level. Now if you already know that the cannabis is also used in some of the medical uh, uh, from the medical standpoint as well and as a medicine for many people and it has been super super successful but when it comes to leisure there are certain restrictions that you want to be aware of as well what is the key takeaway based on investopedia that you see on the on my screen a version of safe banking act is passed the house by vote of 321 to 101 in 2021 which was last year april 19 it still needs to pass in senate where there's there are um, other competing democratic reforms and then it would be signed need to be signed by the president uh mr biden previous version of the bill such as the 2019 bill that have passed the house and it died in the senate so we do not really have an approval from the senate just yet the bill has strong bipartisan support and the sponsors are optimistic that it'll make through the legislative session. 
And this is what we precisely were hoping last week. Cannabis banking will the Safe Banking Act pass. This was the article that I have been looking into on June 21st. We wanted to heavily, heavily really looking into whether the, the Senate can pass this because one of the largest headwinds facing cannabis industry is the lack of access to banking services. And you really want to understand how it impacts not only the revenue, but the way both SNDL and HCMC do their business. Many financial institutions refuse to serve the multi-billion dollar cannabis industry given that the regulatory uncertainty created by the divergent state and the federal cannabis laws. Because bank wants to be, banks want to be uh, on their safe side making sure that they don't lose their own capital if there is any adverse impact or the law are, that, are, that are passed by the government, the Fed and the Senate. The Safe Banking Act seeks to remove this ambiguity at the federal level, clearing the path for more financial institutions to serve the cannabis industry, which precisely did not happen. It also talks a little bit more about uh, anti-money laundering, AML, just to protect some of the terrorist funding and whatever that is happening, so on and so forth. But all in all, they want to do their due diligence, continuing to determine whether the business is complying with the state law. That is number one. Number two is in, in, uh, in fear, interfering with any of these priorities that is listed. And the last thing is engage in suspicious activities, so on and so forth. However, this marijuana banking legalization that, get, that got scraped again so this is as of last week as you can see right here i have done a little bit more research and members of congress keep saying that they want to allow state legal uh, pop businesses that they have to access to the banking system but they keep refusing to actually do it and there are certain challenges that we know in the senate now what what happened was the latest blow from the safe banking act came Thursday, so last week Thursday, when the senator stripped out the proposal of America Competes Act to just address some of the Chinese stuff that is going on, and the House passed the bill that aims to subsidize computer chip manufacturing and other industry to address specifically what is happening with the supply chain management that impacts other of our fa favorite stocks, including NEO, including Tesla, so on and so forth. The inclusion of the Safe Banking Act was one of the law that redeemable aspects of the Compete Acts, which mostly uh, is the mass of these joint between the giveaways to politically connected industries. So you want to understand nothing happened there, and this can happen in future. Now, the second thing that there is also a challenge for specifically, and by the way, I just wanted to mention, you already know how the Sundial is going to get impacted. They're also entering into the bidding agreement with Zenobis Global in asset. And this is one of the bigger uh, deal. The asset covered by this bid agreement is 380,000 square foot internal growing facility that they already have in New Brunswick with the annual production capacity of 46,000 kilograms of dried cannabis, 15,000 kilograms of extraction capacity, so on and so forth. And this is going to be multi-million dollar deal which will add multi-million dollar in revenue for SNDL. The consolidated net revenue for the company at the moment is 11.1 million in the second fiscal quarter of 2022. On the top of that, they're growing super super fast which has increased by 36% to 8.2 million in the second fiscal quarter of 2022 and by 312% prior years. So Xenobis is doing pretty good as a group, as a company. Now on the other side, HCMC, you already know that in 2018, they announced that they have entered into the distribution agreement with MJ Holding Company, a leader in Nevada cannabis market to exclusively sell and distribute it, its cannabis and CPD patented and patented pending quartz Q-Cup technology in Nevada territory. So both of these companies are heavily invested in cannabis. That's all I wanted to share with you. I hope this is much more clear. On the top of that, going back to SNDL, as you already know, SNDL is trading at 33 cents and they have received the notice and extension from NASDAQ's minimum bid price rule requirement. Now, why that is important and what is going on? So Sundial Growers, there is a ton of discussion going on. NASDAQ's compliance process is for the companies to fail to meet the $1 minimum bid price rule requirement in the stock market. 
As you know, SNDL right now, it is trading on, trading on NASDAQ. And what's happening with NASDAQ is if the com company trades for 30 consecutive day business days below $1 of minimum closing bid price requirement, NASDAQ will send a deficiency notice to the company advising that it has been afforded to compliance period of 180 calendar days to regain the compliance with the applicable requirement. And they will have to do that, otherwise they'll be, they'll be delisted from NASDAQ. Now, will that happen with uh, SNDL, yes or no? So here is the another article that I researched, I wanted to share with you. I did it in my one of the past video, but I think this is pretty relevant, so I'm going to repeat a little bit myself. Sundial growers to split the stock during the turnaround year. Now, with the 41 cents when the article was written, and this article is a bit dated, so take it with a grain of salt once again, May 20th, 2022, that it was trading at 41 cents, right now it is trading at 33 cents, has fallen below the Nasdaq's minimum bid rule requirement of $1 per share, and the company has exhausted both their grace period and bring the share price back to the compliance. Now, if they want to get back above $1 within next one month because their end date of the compliance extension is in the first week of August. Now, if they want to meet their minimum bid price rule requirement, it has to triple X, three exit, and they'll have to trade about $1 level, which is unlikely because if you take a look, five days, we are down 11%, one month, we are down 12%, six months, we are down 45%, year to date, we are down 46%. All in all, Nasdaq is also not doing so great because uh, all in all, we are seeing Nasdaq is down, I think, 30% year to date. Let's take a look. Year to date, we are down almost 30%, 29.72% year to date. So in first half of this 2022, Nasdaq did not really do great either. And we do not know when this turmoil or the turbulence is going to end because we are still in the mix of recession. There are a ton of talks going on with recession, with inflation, the more than $5 gas price is also killing so many people. While there is summer and not many people can take the advantage because they are paying a lot more for gas and food and inflation, so on and so forth. So what's going to happen? Now, if we go back to this article, I just wanted to quickly share with you that shareholders most likely will vote for the reverse stock split. Now, why reverse stock split? Now, Nasdaq's minimum bid rule requirement says that they'll have to trade about $1. Does Nasdaq accept reverse stock split as a method to regain compliance with the minimum bid price rule requirement? The answer is yes. Nasdaq reviews, Nasdaq views reverse stock split as an acceptable method to regain the compliance. If the company determines to complete or implement the reverse stock splits, it'll need to log into their listing center, get the process done, complete the complimentary or the company event notification within at least 15 calendar days prior to the implementation of the reverse split. So we might see reverse split coming into the fruition for SNDL. And this is precisely what this article talks about. 2022 is the turnaround year for SNDL. Wall Street expects a profitability this year because they have been heavily investing in many, many companies. Multiple dilution happened as well. Following the earlier coverage based in January that pondered the possibility of SNDL stock announcing reverse split to avoid getting delisted from NASDAQ to meet 180 day extension for the compliance period, the deadline of the exchange. However, they must still rise about $1 per share. Not only that, they'll have to stay above that th threshold for 10 straight business days, transaction days between now and August 8. So mark down this date, August 8, which is one of the major date. Before that, they'll have to either do the reverse split or organically grow their stock price above $1 and stay above and beyond for 10 consecutive business days, which is not likely, that doesn't really look like it. SNDL may not receive another extension from NASDAQ, which is very well said because they can give one extension. Second time, it could be denied as well if the stock is not showing any signs. It's way far below $1 price point. Two consecutive chances are usually maximum allowed to companies price about $1 at, at least 10 consecutive day. And they can go with the reverse stock split option during the third quarter of 2022, which is likely to be happen, 
and which is what I'm talking about. So you can also be ready to make sure that there could be potential reverse stock split for Sundal Grower, which means for every three or four shares, we'll see how many shares that they're considering their reverse, they could reverse split into one share, which will then bring this 33 cents price point about $1 and the company wants to be stabilized about $1. And it could be as high as one to 10 ratio that where the company and the stock is far above $1 price point and can go to $3 and 30 cents as an example, if, if that was one to 10 reverse split today. Now, so you want to consider that. So that's another news that I wanted to share with you. In my opinion, it's not a huge risk for Suntile. It'll still be trading on NASDAQ because the stocks don't really want to go outside of the NASDAQ and YSC, some of the major stock exchange, and they don't want to really become the OTC stock or the counter stock. And they will do their due diligence to make sure that that happens. W going back to HCMC, if once again, going back to once again, taking a step back with Safe Banking Act, if that happens, going to be a win-win situation for HCMC because HCMC had one of the biggest quarter last quarter with $5 million in revenue for the first quarter, which was 46% up year over year. And the gross margin was $2 million for the quarter as well, which is 32% up year over year as well. The company is focusing a ton more at CL HCMC, Healthier Choice Management to make sure that their overheads remain pretty low. And this is a turnaround quarter for HCMC as well. They had done more than $5 million in revenue, 5.05 million to be precise, compared to $3.47 million revenue and approximately $1.6 million more with 46% increase versus the same period. So Q1 in 2021, they have done 3.47. Right now they did 1.6 more. All in all, 5.05 million. Now, with that, what happens is their gross profit was 1.9 million, very close to $2 million compared to what they have done last year for Q1, 1.5 million more or less. The company has done more cash on hand, $20.5 million cash and cash equivalent compared to $26.4 million. And company has been doing some acquisitions, some licensing agreements, making sure that they have their footprint into newer areas. They have done QT, uh, ATB Pharma deal as well for their QCUP management. And they want to expand themselves in Canadian market as well as in Colorado. And of course, they want to make sure that they are also growing in upstate New York. And what they have been doing is they announced their exclusive provider contract with Elevated Living. First quarter financial result we already talked about. They're also growing in Florida, which is their base as well. And in upstate New York, take a look. And they made licensing agreement with Wellness Center, which is once again a big thing. So if the company turns around and they start booking more and more profit, you can of course see that the momentum could be back in terms of the stock price. Where they got all this money, the $20 million from, they actually got $27 million as the proceeds from the rights offering that they did in 2021. And with that, the company has a ton of uh, money to, to spare to, to buy and acquire more and more companies and sign up more and more licensing deals. So there is a great future coming up. I just wanted to share how it impacts with the Safe Banking Act. Could be a positive catalyst for both SNDL and CMC. If you like it, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for, thanks for watching and happy investing.